What's going on, everybody? So today I want to talk about the community and where we're at now that uh, Elemental City has been out. They made that quick hot fix the other day, which to me was also just like a complete joke. Because if you didn't know, um, they only changed the rewards <laughs> at 47 and above. They did swap out some of the stamina. As you can see, they did listen to our feedback, right? Um, and uh, the only thing that they adjusted before at, before level 40 was the stamina. Instead of non-stop stamina, you're getting regular stamina. So in total, you know, you might get, um, I believe it's like 800 stamina total instead of the previous 80 non-stop stamina, which is a cool change, you know. 800 stamina really isn't that big of a deal though in the grand scheme of things. 800 stamina is gonna give you maybe like 1k points towards a dungeon event, which is really not that much, um, but it does help. Uh, but everything else, every other change they made, like the four star eggs, the epic dragon eye, um, which by the way, I don't even think is enough reward increase, but that doesn't happen until 47 or above. <laughs> Which which is hilarious to me because most uh, the average player is going to be 40 or below that is going to be 90 to 95 percent of your player base um, The people that are able to climb a little bit higher either have some people in their guild that have the e3 nick and they'll be able to you know leverage that a little bit or They just you know, they're just stuck or they're just a heavy grinder um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about these past few days honestly past couple of weeks and in my opinion a problem that's starting to creep up in which i was a little worried about because i made a couple videos on this but i think it's actually a bigger problem than fodder which you could say that the fodder is actually a com uh, component of why this is a bigger problem and that is the artificial longevity of this game and what i mean by that because I know there's gonna be a lot of people that disagree, like, oh, you don't want a difficult game. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Didn't you say it was good to have a difficult game? 100%. But the way it's difficult is an important factor, okay? Let me just give you a couple of examples. When we got Elemental City, or when you do Faction Abyss, or when you do Tower Mark, or when you do Dwarven Ruins, when you swap between, for example, stage 25 to 26, which is a significant increase, right? Because you go from having an 8% chance to get four star gear to zero chance to get four star gear. The difficulty massively increases, okay? It massively, massively increases. And I could actually pull up my spreadsheet here because I actually have recorded all of the HPs. The same thing applies to Faction Abyss when you start climbing up these higher stages. I've not even tried to manual anything in Faction Abyss. I don't think it's worthwhile, okay? Um, I've only autoed, I can only auto 21, right? Full auto, right? So I don't even bother with anything else. Same with Dragon Tribe here. I don't full, I don't manual anything because it's not worth it in my opinion. It's not a worthwhile use of my stats. And just to give you guys an idea here, here's the spreadsheet. I mean, if we pull this up and we see at stage 25, uh, you're looking at this amount of HP, right? If we're looking at the boss, looking at 9.181 thousand. And then at 26, it becomes 13 million, which is a very, very massive increase compared to what it was previously, right? This is like a 1.5 million increase. This is like a almost 2 million increase. And then it goes up 14 million, 14 million, 14 million, or 4 million. So the HP levels just massively, massively increase here, which is crazy, right? And then if you do Tower of Mark, right, the same thing happens. You, you climb, you climb, you climb, and then floor 24, you need some mechanic. Otherwise, you can't pass it because the HP is too high, right? And then later on, the damage is just so, so high. Gill boss, I have not reached level 6 yet, so I can't say. But I can tell you that from level 4, where my characters never even came close to dying, to level 5, where my characters just instantly are dying um, in the first you know, couple of rounds, our first half of the game mode. Now, all of these, I would say, aren't really a big problem, right? I don't think Gil Boss is particularly a big problem. I wouldn't say that dungeons, at the at least around that stage, is a big problem. I do think that the higher stages are a big problem. I, I think that the later stages of faction are a big problem. And I think that uh, Tower of Mark has a different problem, but similar. And what is that problem? Well, as I mentioned, it's artificially inflated, artificially elongated based on just pumping stats, okay? 
this is what I don't like. I don't like artificially pumping stats into certain bosses just so that you need the whole mechanics of the game, which is like the sanctuary, right? The game is balanced around the sanctuary, getting all these bonuses on the left-hand side, going and doing your talents, which takes literal years as I've gone over, going through and getting five stars, which is like the sanctuary, um, farming up these sets here with the gear from the dungeons, which can take years as well, getting your mythics exclusivized, right? All these things are very, very long processes in the game, okay? And so in order for you basically to be encouraged to work for these systems, you must get those exclusives because you just need the stats, right? This is very, very different than approaching a certain dungeon with a mentality and certain mechanics to beat the dungeons, right? Now, obviously certain dungeons in this game like Gwyneth have that heal reduction mechanic. Rum has that mechanic where you need to get some dots out to get some extra damage and they have the side ads. So yes, you can do some speed tuning. Yes, yes, yes. Problem is that no matter what dungeon you're facing, unlike games like Raid, for example, the bosses and the monsters in this, in these content pieces just one shot you. They just one shot you. There is nothing you can do about it unless you have higher stats or you're reducing the attack of the boss or you're doing both. Reducing the attack of the boss, you have higher stats and you have some way to survive it. That's very, very different than running max level characters in raid showing up and then because let's say you're fighting the dragon because you don't have the specific damages during those time windows you're getting hit by the big boss and you can't cleanse the debuffs or you're doing spider and you can't turn meter reduction the boss while also cc'ing the spiders right it's not that the, everyone does too much damage it's that there's certain mechanics and certain team comps that you have to build for example fire knight you're running through and you have to run multi-hits to bring down that shield and honestly usually you fail because your, the boss is healing too much and you can't bring down the shield fast enough, right? These are significant differences in difficulty. One, you just get one shot, right? And you just need stats. The other, you need an actual team comp that has synergy to deal with both the waves and the boss. But in this game, the waves are oftentimes not the issue, but they sometimes can be the absolute broken piece of content because they'll just one shot you too, right? So, <clears throat> This has happened with Elemental City, which is why I'm bringing it up, okay? As soon as you hit level 40, like I'm telling you, it's literally like a, a night and day difference. You auto, you auto, you auto, you auto, not that big of a deal. Hit 39, okay, cool, 40, boom, you instantly have to manual it, okay? And you could try it several times. I tried it like four or five times and I was fed up with it because again, I was irritated with the rewards. And so I just decided to use a support character and then I beat it. Couldn't auto 41, 42, 43, 44 in the first try. I just replayed it over and over again. This took like six tries. This took like 10 tries. This took like three tries and then 44. Um, I actually had to manual it as you guys saw in the video. And then I'm on 45 and I didn't even try 45 because I can't even get through the waves on manual. <laughs> um, oh, I've tried it. When I say I haven't tried it, I mean, I've only tried it like three or four times. Try times I haven't really dove in and tried to beat 45. And the problem is that there's not really fun mechanics that I can use, right? The mechanics are outspeed them and one shot them. That's the mechanic. The shield can't be removed, which is I think a, da a bad thing, right? Why not make the shield removable so that you can run characters that remove shields and then deal with that? I think that would be a cool mechanic, okay? Why not have it so that instead of having guaranteed detonation damage on the basic for the hounds, have it so that they apply a burn. So maybe you could apply debuff blocking or you can resist the burns. Can't do either of those things because it's just guaranteed detonation damage. Now you can immune the burns from the AOE dragons, but by then it's already too late because they already have an AOE hit because they already proc the detonation damage from the hound because it's a guaranteed hit. It just doesn't make much sense. Like there's not really much countering the mechanics of the boss. This one, obviously you have to run bleeds in to kind of countering, counter the mechanic of this one, right? But problem is that the stats are so high that you can't even run the proper counters and go into the boss fights because the waves are too difficult and you just need to one-shot the waves or control the waves or deal with the waves somehow 
And so while some parts do actually have mechanics, for example, like this boss where you need to run bleeds, which I think is cool, the stats are way too high for you to even think about that because you just can't even run a team with potential bleed focus. You might have to run one bleed character because the rest of the characters have to be someone that can deal with all the high stats on the stages. And I think this ends up being a pretty massive problem with this game because people are leaving. Whether or not you guys agree with my assessment, people are leaving the game and they don't particularly enjoy this aspect of Elemental City. Now, whether or not that's because of the difficulty, whether that's not because that's um, that's because the rewards suck, I'm not quite sure, okay? I think it's probably a mix of everything. <clears throat> but because of every system taking so long in this game, we have to sit and repeat day in and day out without much progress. The auras take months. The talents take years. The sanctuary takes years. Okay, all of these mechanics in the game, and this is when, when you're considering guaranteed day-to-day -day playing, right? Exclusives, they could take multiple years, especially for certain legendaries. And so there's gotta be some way to either accelerate that process, because again, when I say a game needs to be difficult to have longevity, I'm not talking it needs to be three years before you max a certain um potential mechanic that's core to the game right that might be too long or it can be three years but don't balance every piece of content around you unlocking everything in the game okay because that is very very different heck you could compare it to diablo immortal where people said it takes 50 years to max completely free to play and that is true but guess what you can still participate in every piece of content and actually do well in it, at least in terms of PvE, and not have to worry about it, right? In this game, that's not the case. But now they're both very, very different games, but the point still stands in that this artificial longevity of the game is actually wearing people down more than it's helping. There's a balance, right? Make your content difficult. At the same time, let's say you want to add a new piece of difficult content like Elemental City. Well, here's the perfect time to alleviate some of that longevity in terms of artificial longevity by adding really solid rewards but they didn't want to do that and in fact although they say they're listening to feedback <laughs> they didn't because the rewards here before 40 the only thing that changes the stamina everything else is still exactly the same and still literally not useful right like heck if you were to add up all this stamina Right? And guess how much stamina this ends up being? One and a half four star eggs. That's what it is. So basically, instead of getting 80 nonstop battle energy, we got one and a half four star eggs, which really isn't a big deal, right? You could easily make each one of these scrolls legendary. You could easily make each one of these three star eggs a four star egg. You could easily triple, quadruple the stamina amount. You could double the gem amount. You can make these potions legendary. You can make, um, some of these later stages, potentially five-star eggs, and you really wouldn't have that big of a deal, right? Let's say you were to do all of that, and let's say you were to invest all of that into the Sanctuary, right? Which a lot of people end up doing because they want to awaken characters to advance their game. You would end up with potentially a quarter of an Awaken 5 every two weeks from this event. That's it. So, I think this really needs to be addressed because all I've seen recently in the community, as well as personally, right, is that it's honestly saddening to see such an exciting game mode. Really, I was really excited for Elemental City and when they were talking about it, right? And then you jump into it and it's like, okay, well, because I don't have Santa, because I don't necessarily have um, Awaken Fives, because I haven't spent a ton of money on this game. I'm hard locked. There's nothing I can really do because my stats just are not high enough. Now I'm sure I can grind at maybe 50, 55, but we're talking about someone myself that's been playing since day one of global launch, right? And has been spending a low to mid spenders amount. And on top of all that, I've not even, it's not even worthwhile for me to do any of it. Let's say I were to grind to 55, I get one more legendary scroll. 
and an epic phantom dragon eye okay in three months no not three months in five months i'll get one more legendary exclusive it's like we're talking about one exclusive here for five months like <laughs> it's crazy to me um yeah i don't know i think this is a big problem to be honest in this game and i think this is what's dragging the players down now am i gonna stop playing absolutely not uh i'm still playing i'm still enjoying the game which is funny i just uh, the, the thing that's bringing this up is that although this never elemental cities did not detract from the game in my opinion it only added things the problem is, is that we have waited this long for a new piece of content um which has been four months now and in between they've added whale content which is fine, I get it. I'm 100% supportive of that. But then the first piece of content they added doesn't actually reward its player base for putting in potentially hours upon hours of effort in. Right? Heck, if you look at someone like Ace, right? Even though some of the content, like their Void Tower, was actually quite difficult, at the end it was one of the best rewards in the game, so you, ha you almost always wanted to do it. And you can auto climb for the first floor, but that wasn't added till later. So I hope that they add that. So I don't know. This is just the normal mode too. I don't know if they're going to plan on adding it hard mode later on. I'm sure they will, but I don't even know. I mean, again, if I just look at the rankings here real quick, guys, just to kind of reinforce that point of the game mode is extremely difficult. Literally, <clears throat> literally 48 people in the world have beaten it which is fine. I'm fine with having that be kind of like a, a very difficult game mode. The problem that I have with it being a difficult game mode is one, it's balanced basically around having a E5, E3 whale character, right? So like if you take away that character, which is a whale only character, I don't even know if you could even do it. Um, and then two, even if you could do it, right? Even if you can do it eventually, the amount of time that these people have or the amount of money that these people have spent to save the amount of time that you would need is so so much so much time because you need all the the legendaries you need all the exclusives you need all the stats and that's just it is what it is and heck i'm speaking from someone again who's a low spender has been playing since day one your average player is not a spender and is not been necessarily playing since day one and they'll probably end up at around stage 40 as well. So let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. Um, I I know I talked about the summon events, which I think are a little bit lame. I don't know. I guess I was way more excited to see. I like the Halloween events. I like the Christmas events. I like these events, to be honest. And I think I had a hot take when I was talking about the Christmas event, saying that it was a pretty solid event regardless, even though it was difficult. I also think that the Lunar New Year event was pretty solid and I enjoyed it. Even though there was no Legendary Dragon Eye in it, there were still some solid rewards to acquire. But the new content in the game is just not worthwhile doing, right? Like I'm gonna, uh, Elemental City release, and if there's not an auto mode, I might go up to like 40, right? So I can just battle and I'll auto it. And then if I can't, I'm not even gonna bother because uh, well, I shouldn't say that, but if I have any extra time, maybe, but I'm not going to like stress about gathering up these last few rewards. Um, and I was hoping that there was some reason to push the game, right? There's no reason to sit there. I mean, if you have the time, you guess you could manual for a little bit of extra stage clearing, but I mean, this game is just so like, I think about this game in such a long-term perspective and me playing this game for such a long term that getting one additional reward a day doesn't really change the math a whole lot which is uh, unfortunately the case with this game. So I hope that they add some other ways to alleviate this artificial grind just because you need time invested in the game. And uh, even at four months, I feel like there are so many things to do, which is, I guess you could say a good thing, but at the same time, it's like, there's so many things to do. And the first thing I need to do is just wait for more fodder. <laughs> Which is a whole other conversation that we could have, but... Heck, I've been playing Raid for less time. And completely free to play. 
And I have more maxed out characters on that account than I do on, on a grid. So imagine if I was low spending, it would be ridiculous. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Tomorrow we'll be back to more of just giving you guys content, some news, and uh, some things I've been enjoying. Uh, but I figure I spent a couple of days here talk, critiquing the game and really just addressing the community because almost everyone, as far as I've seen in my comment section, in the messages that I receive, as well as any content creators I've been talking to or I've seen around, is feeling the same way. Where it could have been so good, they just missed the mark, and I hope that they change it in the future. They have, they could still redeem themselves for sure, one hundred percent. Heck, even tomorrow, if they change the rewards in Elemental City, I'd have a different perspective. But until then, see you next time.